Hey, what's up everybody on Facebook? Happy Friday. I should actually know what day it is. It's the 12th, my goodness, February 12th. It's This Week in Housing with my friend David from Keeping Current Matters. We're going to talk about the market. We're going to talk about the two biggest questions that are on the minds of consumers right now. You know what they are. Like, is now the right time to buy? Forbearance is making me nervous and a whole lot more. And I, I think, David, I don't want to give it all away, but we're also going to talk about the bubble, the bubble yeah. that is making a lot of people nervous. So, uh, David, ready? This is my new thing. We're on the clock. Let's see if we can do this in 30 minutes or less, which we know it'll probably take an hour. But uh, so really fast, I can see a lot of you out there just jumping on. Thank you, by the way, yesterday uh, for the video that I produced, we ended up with about 30,000 organic live views in about four or five hours. So I appreciate all the comments and the perspective about, you know, Zillow acquiring showing time and, you know, Lots of news. David and I were just talking off camera. A lot of things happening in our industry right now. Remember, we do this show every two weeks for one purpose, to help you be the knowledge broker, to control the narrative the best you can by giving you data and stats. So when your friends start saying, the world's falling apart, you can say, what data are you looking at? Let me share with you a series of 18 or 19 slides that can help them make better decisions. David, speaking of, a dear friend of mine who's an investment banker over at Houlihan and Loki. Matter of fact, he's the number one debt restructure investment banker. So just so you guys are clear, I said, what was like a recent deal you did? He said, well, when uh, Chuck E. Cheese, the, the little kid franchise right. restaurant during the pandemic, they ran out of money. So I helped them restructure their debt. And like, that's a typical deal for him. He said, I'm watching this KCM stuff. Like, I need more of that content. So I'm, he's doing a talk coming up. I'm actually giving him a bunch of your slides, David, so he can Good. share some of that insight with, I think it's like his local board or something over in Florida. So pretty exciting stuff. But David, now that I've just kind of, you know, ranted a little bit here. Good morning. How are you? Happy Friday. What's the good word over in your neck of the woods? Good morning. Um, the good word here in Central Virginia is there's two or three inches of snow on the ground. So it's a snow day, uh, yeah. good time there. So we're enjoying that. Uh, it is uh, the, the 12th of February, a couple of days away from Valentine's Day. So That's right. That's right. All right. Um, so we'll be here before we know it. We'll share our big plans with our spouses at the end of the show. But let's, uh, let's jump right <laughs> into it. First of all, really fast, everybody out there watching, um, we're going to talk about how's the market. We're going to answer the two biggest questions that are on the minds of buyers and sellers. So I hope you're in a situation where you can take notes where you can listen as always. David, where do they go to get the slides? It's try, T-R-Y, KCM.com forward slash Tom Ferry. Okay. So again, T-R-Y, KCM forward slash Tom Ferry. If somebody can put that in the comments, uh, all the slides are there. They were uploaded this morning. So I want you to have those and use those as you communicate, right, Tom, to, to right. be the knowledge broker. That's right. So, so David, the question that it's on everybody's mind all the time is, how's the market? So I think we should yeah. just write the slides and we should just attack this first and then get into those two pressing issues. And for my friends out there watching live, do me a favor, tag two buddies that you know need this information. Tag two buddies, if you would, that would mean the world to me that need this information. David, fire away. How's the market? Yeah, that is the question. You know, I, I really enjoyed the blog that uh, that you wrote. Uh, it's been in the last week about answering how's the market. I'm going to give you a little bit of, a, and I would encourage you, if you haven't read that blog, go read it. I'm going to give you a little bit of the, the market dynamic, maybe things that you know already, things that aren't going to, I'm going to say surprise you right now, but, but to be armed with that information as you have the conversation. So let's start to take a look uh, at what the research team, the KCM research team is uh, built for us here, such good information. You know, we started watching this housing market recovery index back during the, uh, you know, the pandemic middle uh, towards the, the fall of last year. And, uh, you know, it's no surprise, I think, to anyone that we're up past where we were when we started this, uh, you know, this journey of even this week in housing and the pandemic and everything in 2020. Uh, a couple of things I will say about that is, um, you know, really this this index kind of fell off over the break and people just took a break and that's that's OK. Right. Uh, but we're starting to see that come back. little shameless plug here. If anybody ever asks you if real estate was a V recovery, you can certainly point them to this and uh, and look at that uh, relative to how real estate is recovered throughout the year. 
But um, it's uh, it's an index that I think, you know, we've been having a conversation uh, on our research team this week about, do we continue to follow this? I don't know that we will, but I wanted to give you one last look at it to say, hey, look, this is what the year ended up looking like. And, you know, we talked about on the other side of the lockdown, there's going to be more business for people that are out there doing the right things. And I think that trend is going to continue on into this year, Tom, you know, as, as we look at that. So, David, I want to throw in a, sh- a thought before you go to the next slide, and and it's something that I'm discussing with some of my highest producing clients. Everyone, write this down. You ready? Call every person in your database, and you know that. But here's why, right? The how is always easy for people at your level, David. It's always about getting to understand the why. Yeah. And the why. I'd like to plant this seed for you. Ready? I believe that right now, wherever you are in the world. Someone in your database that you sold a house to two years ago just got a phone call from their manager or the CEO of the company who said, look, we've decided based upon the scenario, we're going to stay remote and we actually let go of our lease or we sublease some space and we're down to 2000 square feet. So basically, you know, thanks, Martha. Thanks, Frank. You're working at home. And in that moment, Martha or Frank sitting at their dining room table just went like this. Excuse my French shit, right? I've been at my dining room table since March of last year, waiting for this thing to end, whether it was going to be two weeks or two months or end of the year or whatever it was. And now all of a sudden their three-year-old is running by, their seven-year-old is coming by, their nine-year-old is here, the dog is barking and their spouse is working in the closet. And they're going to say to themselves, I need a house. I need a house. Using what you just saw right there, if you don't take that piece, email it to your entire database and say to them, let me ask you a question. How has COVID and the pandemic over the last year changed the way you view your home? How has COVID and the pandemic of the last year changed the way you view your home, the way you feel about your home, the way you experience your home? Now, you know me, I am the biggest fan of, have you had any thoughts of selling? Do you know anybody that's had any thoughts of selling? And I hope you're doing that as well. But I'm telling you that question right now, think about how that's going to open up the dialogue because those phone calls are happening every day right now yeah. every day david yeah. let's go to the next slide and, and, and we Our talked thought. about it last uh two weeks ago you know what i mean how that will change and really the the quote that we use is is rewritten the playbook for yeah. home ownership for people that go you know what i need something different no 100%. doubt no doubt you know the next piece of this just to give you perspective on where we're where we sit in the market um, showings, purchase applications, those are mortgage applications, pending deals, existing home sales, new home sales, all up year over year. Why is this important? Last January and February of 2019 were the best two months in the real estate business than in the last 10 years. And where we sit today, it, it, certainly in these, in these green metrics are above that. David, say that again. <laughs> the the, the last- the last January months. and February of 2019 were the best two months in real estate in the past 10 years. And where we sit today is above that. Yeah. This January and February, we are ahead in purchase applications 17% year over year. And, and, and last February was last January was the best year, month in 10 years. Right. Tremendous, right. tremendous demand out of the market. What's the challenge? You see the two red bars there. Uh, existing home inventory has fallen to 45%. New home inventory is down 44%. Now we talked, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago about what experts are expecting relative to homes coming back in the market, but that's the the, the biggest issue uh, right now is is the lack of inventory. And, and again, I'm not telling something uh, everybody doesn't know already, but I want to give you perspective on how strong the market is right now, even given those restrictions. And by the way, for my friends that are watching, and David, keep the slides up here. For my friends that are okay. watching, we're going to talk about the fact that a lot of people, maybe not you, or maybe you, are concerned that we might be in a bubble, right? And yeah. we actually, we're going to cover that. We're going to look at that yeah. today. We're going to look at forbearance. So, you know, these are the things you're hearing or, or worse, these are the things you're seeing or you're experiencing or feeling yourself. We're going to cover all of that. We're going to squash all of that. So David, yeah. let's talk about year-over-year listings because I think a, a lot of people get the sense of where we're at. But this next one is it this this next slide you should email to your entire database, right? Yeah, the uh, I've got two slides coming up here. The first one's purchase applications, just kind of a, 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 a reinforcement of what we just saw. 
ever since the lockdown, year over year, we've been up each week in purchase applications. So think about this as this, you know, the week compared here to this time last year. Again, underscoring the strong uh, uh, demand out in the market. A lot of that driven by people that are, you know, that need something new in a home. You get a great ex- example of that when we started here, Tom, but also low interest rates. Now, there's a lot of data coming out about interest rates. We know the projection is that they will begin to rise. I saw a really good article this morning that, that really emphasized the point that rising interest rates will have more impact in the mortgage world on refinances than they will have on demand. Now, is it going to cost more? Yes. As, as interest rates rise, it will cost more, but it's likely not to squelch that demand uh, as, as you know, we go through the year. Because again, remember, rising interest rates are always that, uh, that, that signal of a stronger economy. And as, as the economy improves, more people have jobs, more things happen. Um, that is a good thing for, for our business. But the, you know, the, the, the real you know, image of where we sit in our business is right here, the year over year change in listings. Um, you know, green in this uh, graph refers to the number of new listings coming to market. And the orange turning there to red is the inventory, you know, the, the, the total listings, what's on hand. And we're at a time right now where it's been, it's lower than it's ever been since it was recorded in the early 80s. Um, and homes are being purchased quicker than they're even coming to market. We're selling more homes and we have, you know, listings coming in every month by and large in most uh, areas. And, and that's still, that you know, Tom, you mentioned on the front end, so many things happening, so many things to distract us right now. This is really what we need to be, be out there doing. Yep. So before we go into the, the sort of forbearance concerning question for people, I just want to share with my friends out here watching. <clears throat> this is a moment in time where more of the same is only going to get you more of the same. You've got to think differently. You've got to look at the problem of no inventory as an opportunity to try something new. I'll give you an example. What if you send an email to your entire database, right? An email, right? Easy, fast, boom, done. Hey, Martha, wanted to check in and let you know what's happening right here in uh, the you know, museum area of Dallas. Home price appreciation over the last 12 months has gone from X to Y, right? Inventory has gone from X to lower Y. And I field calls every day from people saying, I'm thinking about selling, but the challenge is there's no homes on the market. I have a basic hypothesis around this, right? But here's basically the solution I have for my customers. Obviously, the hypothesis, hey, interest rates, this, that, right? You, you share all the things that we're sharing here. You say, these are the three or four things that are going on. But here's what I'm now doing for my customers. If you are interested in having me shop for you homes that are currently not on the market, shop for you homes that are currently not on the market, so you could sell your home and potentially only move once by finding the one that isn't on the market, simply fill out this Google form and you put a link in there where they can fill out a Google form. I want four bedrooms, I want three bath, I wanna be on this part of town, I want this and this and this, I need this much of a square footage lot, yada, yada, this many. And they basically tell you everything that they want you to go hunt for. Now, why am I doing this? Because we know that 66% of the people that wanna go buy that house need to sell a home in order to do the next one. And what we're trying to do with this concept is unlock with you and with the customer, hey, you know what? I'd be interested in that. Yeah, if you can find me a this, 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 this. Now, what am I really doing? I'm getting people to raise their hand and say, I'm a research phase seller. And what we know as great sales strategists and marketeers, you can take our Yikes campaign and say, I'm representing a buyer. They're desperate to look on your street, your neighborhood, your community. Have you had any thoughts of selling to start activating them? And my friends, the people that are doing it are winning. The point is simply this, before we go to forbearance, what got you here is not going to get you there. You're going to have to try some different things. Making phone calls to your database is a no brainer. Sending emails like this is a little out of the box, but that's what it's going to take for you to generate the inventory you need. So David, let's talk about forbearance. Yeah, the, the, this question of forbearance is one, and, and I want to say one thing before we, we start this. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing for just a second. Here's how this question comes up typically in people that we're talking to is, I'm not sure I want to do something right now. There are 3 million people out there that can't make their mortgage payment, right. and I don't think this is going to end well. 
Now, I want to say this. If you're watching the news every night and you're a consumer, you're not in our business, that's a very logical thought. Yep. We can't forget that. And I would even say right now, tag somebody that you've had that conversation with, either in your office or somebody you've been talking to, because what I want to do is I want to take you through what is happening with the most current information, because I think it is uh, information right now that most people that aren't in our business don't have access to. This is an opportunity we can bring you know, the truth of forbearance and the truth of what's happening to the market and to people that are thinking about buying and selling. And, you know, I always say we, we don't want to convince somebody to do something they don't want to do, but we don't want them to not make a decision because they think something else or they're, or they're misled in a, in a particular area. So let's look at where we stand. You know, if, if you've been following us on This Week in Housing, you, you're, you're uh, familiar with this slide. This is the number of mortgages in active forbearance through the most recent reporting, uh, the first of this month uh, that we can get. About 2.7 million mortgages uh, in forbearance right now. Now, remember, that's the tool the federal government's given us to help weather the storm in housing uh, to, to say, okay, we need to make it to the other side. There's going to be people affected. And, and what's the good news, bad news right there? It's remaining steady. It's not dropping uh, as, as it you know, had been through the fall. So since we got into kind of the, the November, October, November timeframe, we've kind of hovered in this, uh, you know, this line under 3 million, about 2.7 million uh, million mortgages in forbearance. And, you know, as we go through the, through the year, people are going to come off of forbearance and that's what we want to start to watch. Okay. Now the, the, this next slide, we used it a couple of weeks ago. This is the most current information. Super. Again, um, yep. one out of two people that are in forbearance are in this green slice of the pie. I call those the ones that didn't need it. They exited forbearance. They were paid in full. Um, you know, about uh, one in three, the blue slice of the pie, they're in some form of, of rework, uh, repayment plan with their bank. You know, the banks aren't trying to take all these homes back. And the ones in red are the ones that are still in trouble, about 15%. Not a lot of change in that over the last couple of weeks. The one thing that I, I want to I bring this to you, this is a cumulative period of those that left in June of last year through January 31st. So the first piece of data that we're looking at. Now, I want to bring you, you, you context here with this quote. Let's just look at the, at hey, the words in blue here. Yeah. Before you do, just for a second, I just did a quick calculation. We're talking about 364,000 people that appear to actually be in trouble. Correct. It's about 320, 325,000. So I'm going to go into that number, but yeah. Okay. So just for everybody watching, I think this is super, this is, again, how do you separate yourself from the masses. We know number one is you execute, right? You execute, you win. But providing something like this and saying to people the truth about forbearance or, you know, think about a headline that you can get people to like say, wait a minute, like what's going on? You know, 13.5% of 2.7 million people are actually in trouble. And, and again, yeah. I don't know if that would be my exact headline. My point is you want to be the one that says, hey, you probably read about this. You've probably seen the sensationalization in the news, but I wanted to share this data with you so you can make a better decision. Or if you know someone that is concerned, here's what's really going on. And oh, by the way, if you are in that loss mitigation situation, if you're in that and you don't know what to do, here are two resources of information you can go to. Go into your local bank. This is how you yeah. do it. Be that person that is, we always say providing value, but with something like this, it's, it's like what we did back in the day when you were like, hey, if you're behind and you don't know what a short sale is, let me get you in touch with, it's the same right. exact thing. And, and David, right. you and I both know, if all of those, and we knock on wood, like nobody wishes for any of them to be in trouble. Sure. But if, but if something happens, right, those properties are going to sell and it's going to add to the inventory. And I know that sounds horrible because we're talking about human beings. Sure. But remind me again, the prior to this, how many foreclosures happened on average in a typical quarter before we kind of stopped it all with forbearance? Yeah, about 200,000, just over 200,000. I think our latest numbers are 207,000 uh, per quarter, significantly below that right now because of the moratorium and, and right. you know, the, the pullback on forbearance, I mean, on uh, foreclosures. So let's go to the quote. I apologize from Rick. No, no, it's, it's really good. Here's the word you were, you were saying, hey, I don't know if I would say this, that they're in trouble. These are the ones in red, Tom, that are at risk. Right. Thank These you. are the ones that, 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 describe it. 
Yeah, you know, that, that, that have the potential to go into some form of distress sale or, or for whatever the case may be. Yes. Now, let's look, there's a lot of words here on the page. I want to camp here for just a second. I want to focus more on the blue words than the white ones. This is talking about people that have come off of forbearance uh, since July of last year. I'm going to, I'm going to talk, I'm going to say that's the majority of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, starting there at blue, uh, 87% of them did so with a repayment plan in place. Their loans reinstated, their missing payments deferred to the end of the loan, paid off the loan or had a loan modification in place. All positive outcomes. Yes. How do we start this? There's a lot of people that think there are 3 million people right now that can't make their mortgage payment. Well, 87% of the ones that have come off of it have come off in some form of positive outcome. I'm going to say they didn't need it. They reworked it. Their bank worked it out with them. That's almost nine out of 10 people. Right. And I don't think most people know that. I, yeah. I think we have to be very, very vocal about this and over communicate this fact relative to, um, uh, you know, what's going on with forbearance. The, the quote goes on to say the remaining 13 percent who left the program without a repayment plan. Uh, of some sort are the ones that are probably most at risk, what we just said, going into default. Yeah. If these numbers remain consistent, about 325,000 people will exit the forbearance program over the next six to nine months, not all at one time, without a plan in place, some, but probably not all of those loans will likely uh, you know, default or be in some form of, of uh, workout on that. So I think keeping that in perspective of what's actually going on with forbearance, you know, the narrative oftentimes is more dominated by the, the 13% that, you know, and that, and that assumption is being applied to all of those in forbearance. Now, we don't wish anyone to, to lose their home. And, and if, you know, if they've been impacted in the coronavirus by a loss of job, loss of income, all that we feel for them. And, you know, we've said many times, if one person doesn't have a job, we want them to have that job but it's not the total market right now. But Tom, going back to your point, it is the area where we can help people, where yes. we need to continue to be vocal, where we need to continue to bring this message uh, to those that, that may be coming off this year. Right, right. That's a powerful, that's, I mean, it's a huge quote, but it's a, there's a lot to take from that, again, to add into an email, add into a social post, share in a video, the more we educate around this, the more we don't run from the data, the more we lean into the data, the more we are recognized as the knowledge broker, the yeah. person that they can trust, the person they can go to and say, look, it's not me, but my aunt Sally, this is a situation she doesn't know what to do, right? Yeah. We want to be of service. That's what this whole thing is about. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's go to that next slide because I think it's, I mean, again, I'm, I'm the bigger fan of the, all the data and the slides do it for me. Let's yeah. keep going. Yeah, so this is this is the last piece of, of data I've got on forbearance today. But this this one, you know, if somebody were to say, okay, what happens if all these were to come, uh, you know, to the market at a you know uh, sort of a, the same time? Uh, the thing that people have in their favor today relative to housing is that as of this is of February 2021, all those in forbearance, 90% of the people in forbearance have at least 11% equity. Okay. So strong, strong equity yeah. in the situation of people that uh, are in active forbearance. Uh, they are the beneficiaries of appreciating home prices. And Tom, uh, you know, we've talked about this before, 325,000 homes, if they came on the market today, we need that inventory. We don't want to see that happen to those individuals and families, but, but those homes would be sold. Uh, and they would likely be sold in a lot of cases above list price. Um, and so I think there is a way to look through this and say, okay, if you are in that situation and you do need to have a confidential private conversation relative to what's going on uh, with your home and, and how you've been impacted, let's have that conversation because there are buyers out there. there. There are solutions for you where you don't have to go down the road of maybe what you would have in, in the past. David, I almost wonder, I mean, I, I, I'm putting myself in the shoes of my clients, depending upon where you are in the country, uh, this may or may not make sense for you, but maybe you bring in uh, an attorney or you bring in someone from your local bank to say, let's take a look at this. 91% of the homes or 90% of the homes are in a situation where there's more than enough equity for them to sell, right? That are currently in forbearance. And, you know, 9% of them, there's still a margin there, right? I mean, depending upon yeah. where they are and 1%, they're in trouble. 
what if you just did a Facebook Live and, and you said, hey, this Thursday at five o'clock, I'm going to have, you know, uh, you know, this person who's an attorney and this person for the bank. And all we want to do is educate. So if you know anyone that is in this situation, you know what your rights are, you know the things you can do, the actions you can take, the resources that are available. And I want to, as you'd be broadcasting, you'd be telling people, look, 90% of the homes in the country are not in this situation, right? Or in this case, the ones in forbearance are not in this situation. There's plenty of equity, but I want to make sure that even if just one of you is watching in my database, if one of you is in this situation, I want you to know what you can do. And yeah. I, don't, I don't care if you got five people on there, the five people you have might be the five in that red. And if you're helping them, you're winning. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this is a, this is our time uh, this year to help those that, that are that are going to be affected. Uh, there will be people that, that will be affected, no doubt. Uh, foreclosures will rise throughout the year. I mean, if you even think about it, Tom, the moratorium on foreclosures, even those that maybe weren't, even if we don't have a pandemic, we don't have forbearance, people would still go into foreclosure. Right, right. And those are going to come back to, to uh, the market. Things are going to happen. So we will see a rise. Do expect to see headlines that say, you know, foreclosures doubled, foreclosures tripled, or whatever the case may be. But, but it's all a matter of, of, okay, do we understand what's, uh, you know, what's in there? How do we best help people and then do the job to get the word out? Uh, I think it's very, very uh, workable in that situation. Right. So, so David, we're right on time, and this is awesome. Uh, the <laughs> question that is on so many people's minds, I mean, you probably get it as many times as I get it, just out and about, friends, email, text, social, quiet conversations. Are we in a bubble? Stock market's at 31000 Should I sell everything? Should I sell my house? Are we at 2006 or seven again? Like, yeah. I'm hearing that rumbling from agents that are concerned. Yeah, so you know absolutely. From a client or two, and so I mean, let's let's just talk about it. The bubble. Let's let's talk through that. It is no doubt a question that many of us are asking. Uh, many uh, are going, "Hey, I see homes appreciating very very quickly. I remember this. I remember what happened. Right. Are we in a bubble?" I would even say, "Look, uh, I'm going to show up here." It was the front page of the my app of the USA Today um, on the fourth of this month. Are we trapped in another housing bubble? It was in Yahoo. Why are so many Americans predicting a housing market crash? And if you go into this article in Yahoo, 67% said some form of correction or crash in the housing market is where they felt like things were going to go. These were consumers. It just felt that way. Now, you know, as you go through these, I can tell you this on the USA Today article is a very positive article for housing. And you can see if you can even see it in the fine print, it says, but it's nothing like the mid 2000s. Now, I'm going to argue relative to bubble right now, Tom, these headlines are going to do more to terrify than to actually clarify the situation. Um, and that's you know, that's what we have to attack in our business is what is the truth about home prices and a bubble. So I want to give you a little bit of data. I, I, want to, I want to first say, I think this is a valid question that a lot of people are asking, and we need to have a really good answer to it. And I'm going to give you a couple of resources for that. But if we think about, okay, where does this question start to, uh, you know, originate? It's definitely in the way that home prices have appreciated over the last several years, but last year in particular, you know, average home price appreciation in this country is 3.8%. You know, our research team built this out going all the way back to 2000 and say, what if, what would the world look like if homes just appreciated at 3.8% each year? And then we laid in, okay, what does that look like when we lay in actual appreciation? And this right. is what it looks like. So actual appreciation is outpacing historic, I'm gonna call it normal appreciation. So we go, okay, yeah, we can validate that by the data. It's a very, very uh, logical thing for people to go, okay, here we go again. This feels like, and if I use my cursor, we're right here. It feels like we're kind of right here, right? Oh, oh, 05, oh, 06, and gosh, I sure remember how that played out. Um, and so, um, you know, we have we have memories that, that kind of go, okay, how, what do I do in this position? relative to my housing so that I don't get you know caught maybe like I did last time. So let's talk through this. Uh, let me give you a few uh, you know background pieces of information. 
the, the Case Shiller Report National Home Price Index came out recently. Homes appreciated at 9.5% uh, last year. FHFA said homes appreciated at 11%. So I'm going to call that 10% home, appreci home price appreciation over the last 12 months. Uh, and there are others out there that give other you know, forecasts that are, that are slightly you know, around that area. Bill McBride with Calculated Risk said this. This is key. He said the case show uh, uh, released today, the seasonally adjusted national index was reported as being 26% above the previous bubble peak. However, in real terms, the index is about 1% above the bubble peak, meaning once you factor in for inflation, loan price appreciation, all of that, about 1% above. But where this conversation tends to go is we cannot sustain year over year home price appreciation of 10%, the market won't bear it. Well. My first you know, factual piece uh, rebuttal for that for forecasters is nobody's calling for that. Uh, if you look at this home price forecasters, we've taken seven of the forecasters here, the average being about half of what we saw last year. Now, we, you know, with low interest rates, with lack of uh, supply in the market, certainly we're gonna see home price appreciation. These expectations are not as high as what they were last year because forecasters are expecting inventory to come back in the market. We just talked about an area in forbearance and those affected financially by uh, the pandemic. That's going to be an area in inventory is going to come back to market. You know, two weeks ago, Tom, we talked about the other areas that inventory is going to come back to market and where to be looking for uh, those opportunities. So the first piece is, as we look at appreciation, nobody's calling for that type of appreciation this year. Uh, relative to home prices. Another way to, to really be able to articulate what's happening in the market relative to prices is, is this graph right here. When you look at inventory, which is the, the orange bar going down over time, and you look at home prices going up, as supply and inventory goes down, price is going to go up. Yeah. This is the clearest articulation of what's happened in the U.S. real estate market over the last, you know, 10 years, I'm going to call it post-crash, is prices have gone up and, and inventory has started to, to go down. Uh, now, as inventory comes back into market, as interest rates go up, I think you're going to see less appreciation than what we saw last year. And certainly forecasters are saying that. The other big piece of, uh, of information relative, if, if we want to compare it to the crash, is this graphic right here. And, and many of you have seen this. It's one we've used at KCM for, gosh, the last you know, year or so. We've talked about the differences in the market. When we were back in 06 and 07, 08, we were in a buyer's market and home prices were appreciating. Today, we're in a seller's market and home prices are appreciating. What's the difference between those two? One, demand today is real. Demand back in in 2005 and six was not real. You know, we had, we had inflated ability to qualify for a home loan through, uh, you know, a number of different products that just aren't out in the market today. And, and, you know, we've showed the mortgage credit availability index to show how that pendulum has swung back. So we can say, yeah, people that are buying homes are qualified for them. And I think if we look even further, what we were talking about before, Tom, is the amount of equity in homes today you know, if somebody were to be in a situation where they needed to sell, they're not underwater more than likely. You know, back in 2010, yeah. one in four mortgages in this country was underwater, where today that number sits right about 3%. Very, very different from where we were back then. You know, if you want, if you want information on this, I'll say we wrote a blog this week, uh, Casey, um, uh, three reasons we are not in a bubble. Okay, we go through those, share. I would highly encourage you to, one, to go read it. Uh, you can go to kcmblog.com to go read that. But also share that with anybody you've talked to that thinks, you know, we're in a bubble right now. It'll help you articulate the reasons we're not. I think we always have to look at supply. We always have to look at demand. We need to be aware of market factors. Um, but, but very, very different uh, dynamics in the market playing out. And again, I'm always going to go back to this. The strength of the housing market right now lies in equity, lies in the, the tappable equity that homeowners have that we have to continue to remember and remind people was not there in the housing crash. And, and I think, Tom, as we start to, to look at that, we can go, okay, we can, we can slay that myth because 
we we have people that want homes and the reality of the US real estate market right now is that home construction and, and homes aren't keeping up with population. We've got to, to have uh, more housing for people and, and bring back this imbalance from a buyer's uh, and, you know, and seller's market uh, just so folks can find homes. So I think there's a lot of information out there to refute this myth of a bubble right now. I listen, David, I agree. And, you know, for all my friends out there watching, it's 904 here in the West, uh, you know, 1204 in the East. I love that so many people check in on this show and, and take this. I just want to remind you, execution is the single greatest degree of separation. It's one thing to sit in with David and I and to look at these slides and talk about it and be interested in it. And maybe, maybe you just pull a couple little confidence nuggets. So the next time you're engaging with someone or in a conversation, et cetera, it's great. But I'm going to argue that right now, I, I interviewed somebody on my podcast yesterday and I won't, I won't disclose it yet. Uh, but this person is extremely educated, very bright, one of the best in class in her space. And she literally said to me yesterday, I don't go to the news for the news. Mm. I go to the news for drama, right? When I'm looking for actual data, I'm looking for, I'm not looking for this stuff. I'm looking for this stuff, right? I want to know what's really going on. And David, you guys do so much to make that happen. I just want to say thank you again. I know I've thanked you a million times, but I want to continue to thank you guys for doing what you do. I want to stress to everybody, go to trykcm.com forward slash Tom Ferry, download all these slides and do a show. Go on Facebook, use the slides, you know, be the person that executes over everyone else and you will be the dominant leader in your market. You'll be the educator of your tribe. You will help more people. And that's what this is all about. So David, we said, what are the likelihood of us actually finishing a show before <laughs> an hour? We're going to be done in like 45 seconds. We did it. I, I know. We got a lot of value. We did it quick. Closing thoughts from you before we, uh, before we see you again in two weeks. You know, I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. Even now, tag somebody on this. Get this information out there. Take one piece of what we talked about today. Record a video. I've seen so many of our KCM members record this video of why we're not in a bubble. You want to put something out right now that will get traction and people will get people's attention? That's it right there. It's being talked about. People are reading the USA Today. People are reading things. So I would encourage you to grab one thing. And Tom, I, I will share the thanks with the entire KCM crew. But I always say this doesn't get out there without you and without great agents that go out there and share it. So no, we're grateful for that. Yeah, love it. And I, I will just reiterate, if you look at the strength of SEO juice around housing bubble, I would be writing blogs. I would be doing videos with housing bubble in OKC right? I would do a postcard to my database saying, are you concerned about a housing bubble right here in, name the city, yeah. name the community, let's have a conversation. I've got some data you might be interested in. Use this information, my friends, to educate and attract more listings. That's why we do this. So David, thank you so much. I'll see you in two weeks for all my friends out there. Share this with you know a friend or two. Let's keep educating people. And by doing that, we solve a lot of these problems together. So God bless you guys. Have a great Friday and a great weekend. And we'll see you in two weeks. Take care.